Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today I have another Friday Sews vlog for you where I will be discussing all the things that I have been up to sewing wise these past couple of weeks. So first and foremost, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. It's the Sage Brush Top by the Friday Pattern Company and the pattern is this one here. I have spoken about this pattern in a previous uh, Friday Sews vlog and also in my uh, Roundup May Makes vlog as well. So I will um, uh, put the, the links to those vlogs in the description for you so it's easy for you to find if you wish to have a look at that. Um, and it's made up in a Lady McElroy Visco Shally. And um, this is a top which I won um, a runner-up place for the Lady McElroy Makes of the Month competition, which I'm very happy to say. Um, and also recently, the Friday Pattern Company got in touch with me via Instagram and they asked if, I, if they could use uh, my photo wearing this blouse in their sage brush top roundup um post on their instagram page to which obviously i said thank you very much uh, i'd love to be featured in it um and as a result of that they then offered me a pdf of my choice for free um in exchange for me allowing them to use my photo which i think is amazing now obviously when we do post um, you know as other sewists will know when we do post um our makes on instagram you know the posting alone and sort of the love and the comments that you get from the post um it just makes it all worthwhile but especially so when sort of the fabric company or the pattern company that you've that you've chosen to to make the garment out of um when they contact you and they want to post your photos even even that's even better it's just like the icing on the cake and even more so when they offer sort of uh, a sort of a reward or a um some sort of compensation for that i think that's even even more amazing so i decided to go for the davenport dress which i haven't yet made before as i don't have the pattern obviously and that literally was emailed uh, to me within sort of five minutes of me emailing them back which is amazing so that was Paige at friday pattern company thank you very much Paige. Uh, so going back to the items that I have been uh, making over the past two weeks, um, for those of you that do follow me on Instagram at my social thread, I have posted uh, photos of these makes already and also a couple of reels and some of the items as well. So the first uh, things that I made um, uh, for this month um, were two dresses for my uh, uh, seven-year-old daughter Anya and I used this dress the Ellie and Mac be curious uh, dress which I have shown to you all before for those of you who do follow me um, so this is a PDF pattern by Ellie and Mac. It goes from a size range 12 months to 12 years old, which is amazing. I have made this dress before, exactly this dress actually in the chambray for my daughter. And I decided to make her her first Holy Communion dress. So we're practicing Catholics and um, first Holy Communion is one of the sacraments that you um, take um, growing up as a Catholic. And she uh, had her first Holy Communion a couple of weeks ago or last week. And I decided to make her her first Holy Communion dress using that pattern so I will show you the dress now the hanger's not the best hanger uh, so here is the dress dee -dee 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 -dee. I'll stand up it's very very long <laughs> the camera's not gonna go down all the way the beautiful lace at the bottom there um, and I'll show you the back of the dress as well um, I haven't buttoned them up, but it's pearl, well, pearl eyes sort of buttons at the back. And again, the skirt and that beautiful lace at the bottom there. Um, I also made a matching veil to go with that in the same beautiful lace. So again, you can see all the sparkles and embroidery on there. And I just added a black little, they're actually called wig clips. So um, I added a black little one because the black um, matches her hair, so you can't see it when she's got it on. Um, and I made this up in um, some faux raw silk in white from eBay. I'll link them down below. And for those that have been following me or have been um, our regular viewers, um, I did wanted I did want to go for pure. Um, 
100% pure raw silk, uh, but I wasn't able to find a supplier that could get it to me in time. Uh, with the right color, with the right shade of white, I know that sounds really odd, but there is so many different shades of white if you are in the fabric industry or even sort of in the paint industry, any sort of industry where there's, you know, white, you know, there's bright white, there's uh, ivory, there's off-white, there's nude white, there's all sorts of white. Anyway, I couldn't find a white white, a normal plain white in the raw silk that was um, um, where the shipping time would get to me in time. So unfortunately, I had to go for the faux raw silk, which is fine, actually, because the quality and the look of it, it still has the same quality and look, uh, but at the third of the price, which is amazing. So raw silk, the one that I had originally bought was... 18 pounds a meter and I it was from Etsy and when I received it the color was more of like a creamy beigey ivory so I had to return that which was fine because they did accept returns um, and this faux raw silk was only 6 99 off eBay so a third of the price and I think it's you know the quality is looks the same to me um, and it has sort of that slub texture which I love it has the sheen without being ch uh, sh cheap and shiny um, and that's that. So the bodice is the same. I believe I just gathered the sleeve heads a little bit here to get a bit of poof there. And I just did a, a simple bodice, the round um, neckline and the short sleeves this time round. The main lace of the, um, the dress was from a company called White Lodge Fabrics. Yep, White Lodge Fabrics. Um... And I will uh, link them below as well. So this uh, beautiful lace, it's basically a white tulle with embroidered, um, they're, ca they're called, um, it's, I think it's called Trailing Daisy, a white embroidered Trailing Daisy design with beads and sequins sort of hand sewn onto there. And then the bottom of it has like a scalloped edge, which is beautiful. So this fabric was actually quite expensive. It was $34.99 a metre and I bought two metres because you couldn't get half metres anyway. So I used a good metre and a half for the skirt and then the remnants I used uh, to make up a veil for her. And um, what else did I get? From White Lodge Fabrics I also got the crinoline which is under here. So it's sort of... Um, it's like a thick tool, but that's what they use presumably in bridal outfits to poof out the um, underskirt of the dress. Uh, so that was only like six ninety nine on um, from White Lodge Fabric as well. And then the skirt under here is the same faux silk that I used for the bodice. Uh, and there you go. I'll pop up some pictures of my daughter wearing it. Um, and I really, really enjoyed making this. Um, she does have, well, my two older daughters um, shared the same First Holy Communion dress. But when I got it out for my third daughter, Anya, it just wasn't very, she didn't like, it didn't feel comfortable wearing it. She didn't feel comfortable wearing it. And there was a stain on the dress. And so I decided, you know what, um, I've got the time. I've got the skill now. Um, let me just see if I can make her one. And also, I don't obviously buy um, sort of this kind of fabric on a regular basis so it was actually quite fun trying to hunt down the perfect lace sort of the crinoline and obviously the faux silk hunting was fun until I couldn't find the right color um, in time so then I had to go for the faux but it's fine and I really really enjoyed making it also I have done a reel for this and it's on Instagram so if you do want to check that out please go to my Instagram account and she had a beautiful beautiful day she had lots of compliments it fitted her really beautifully and I think it's almost like an heirloom piece. I still have another daughter who's one years old at the moment. So she will be wearing this for her first Holy Communion, please God, uh, in the future. And likewise, my daughters um, and my sons, actually. So I have um, for their baptisms, um, they were shop bought to be fair, but it was um, raw silk uh, and lace um, baptism gowns. Um, and I had one for the girls that all the girls have worn and then one for the boys that all the boys have worn. So it's sort of like an heirloom that gets passed down at my family. In addition to that, I have also had um, various cousins and things borrow the um, the christening gowns which is really really nice and um, because it is a quality sort of piece of garment I should if I have it to hand I will um, try and pop up a picture if I can find it in in my storage cupboard uh, but that's sort of the similar thing that I want to do with this dress hopefully it'll get passed down uh, through the generations um, and that's that so very happy about that um, what else am I going to say about that oh and then after the um, her first Holy Communion, she, I also made her a party dress. Um, again, using the same pattern, you wouldn't believe. Um, and I've made her this dress right here. Uh, 
honey down with a cup a fluff a frill at the bottom so again the be curious dress i made this version here with the long sleeves um and the little um elasticated cuffs um so it's the um the, the skirt has the frill at the bottom and also this fabric is from jelly stitches fabrics it's a white um what do you call it dobby or tufted cotton with a floral print on it and it is quite sheer I wouldn't say sheer you can see through it so I did line the bodice which the pattern says anyway regardless of the fabric the bodice is lined just for comfort and for neatness inside as well I can show you inside actually so it's just lined with some white some white cotton again I've used sort of these um, flat per pearlized buttons at the back um, and I obviously lined the skirt as well and with the frill so basically with the lining for the skirt I just made the, the skirt and the frill twice one in the main fabric and one in the white cotton fabric uh, and that looks really really nice I think it looks like a sort of elegant um, almost quite a traditional party dress um, and my daughter wears it when she, she wears it down and when she's feeling a bit hot she just rolls it up and it looks quite nice rolled up to her elbows as well um, and I'll post up some pictures of her wearing that Sorry, I've got an itchy nose today. So that's the second um, item that I made over the past couple of weeks. Um, and then what else have I been up to? The third item I made is the Anthea Allen, the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. A very popular pattern. I'm sort of late on the Anthea Allen, uh, on the Anthea blouse uh, train, as it were. Um, I am not too, I wasn't too keen on items that are loose fitting sort of big puffy uh, sleeves, although funnily enough I've got sort of a puffy sleeve blouse on here. Actually it was a sage brush top that kind of converted me. Um, as soon as I'd made that I just thought, you know what, I really actually like a loose blouse and I love a puffy sleeve. So I went and bought the Anna Allen uh, pattern and I'll show you right here. It's this blouse here, so I've done this version here. You can also turn it into a dress by simply lengthening the, the pattern. Um, and this is a PDF pattern by Anna Allen. I don't know of any other patterns that she does that's as popular as this, uh, but this is sort of trending, still trending after a good couple of months. And I decided to make mine in a natural colorway of linen, 100% linen. Again, this was from Jenny Stitches Fabrics. And here she is here. And I just think I'm in love with it. The first time I tried it on, I mean, this is supposed to be like a casual blouse, but the first time I tried it on, it just looked so elegant and so just lovely and regal. And I just, I just loved it. Um, so as you can see, it's that's the lovely linen there. I think in terms of the pattern drafting, the pattern pieces like um, sewed up really nicely. Um, you have bias bound neckline here and I just thought that fitted all beautifully. There was no, I didn't have to do anything more than once. Um, and it's just all like, sort of beautifully finished. I forgot to put a label there. That's a shame. Um, and I just thought, you know, the sleeves are gorgeous. All of this gathering at the sleeves. Look how big the sleeve is. I mean, I could fit my head in that if I wanted to. And then you have like a cuff at the end. Um, and then the bottom is just hem. So it's slightly, um, it's not a straight line hem. Um, it sort of curves up a bit at either side and then you've just you just turn it over at the at the hem and then a button placket all the way down the front and I've just gone for some shell sort of star um, buttons from the hemline from Hobbycraft um, and the back of the blouse is like this and I'll pop up some pictures of me wearing it and I really really like it um, I am going to make some more of these and I'm also going to make some dress versions as well which I think will look really really nice and um, what did I like about the pattern like I said I loved how all the pattern pieces just fit together so perfectly I love the fact that the bias binding fitted really really nicely and also the instructions are very simple actually and um, I had no problems at all with them but I love how it sort of says bear with me okay so it sort of says you know with the with the hems for the uh, for the um, neckline the, the bottom hem uh, the cuffs or the sleeves it simply says uh, fold bottom um, by a quarter of an inch and press and then fold under again by three-eighths of an inch 
press and uh, sew in place and those measurements just beautifully just in caps it just beautifully folded into each other and it was just such a neat finish I really really enjoyed sewing it I think I sewed it in one evening also the fabric was really nice to work with it's a linen so it's perfectly you know it's amazing to cut to to fold to uh, iron and to sew through so that, I guess that helped but I really really enjoyed making it uh, it was a relatively quick sew and the satisfaction was quite um, was quite quick, as I say, because it was an evening so, uh, and I really really like it. Um, what else am I going to say? So with this blouse, oddly enough, there was a lot. So I printed this out on A4 and I had to stick it all together, and it took me a go gosh a good probably two hours to stick this thing together just to say if you are doing the a um, a4 printing at home so the first sort of i think it's like 12 sheets of probably more like 18 sheets of paper so the first two rows you need definitely the last two rows i think most of it was they give you a pattern piece for all the button placements so for all the different sizes they give you individual strips and um, pattern piece strips for all the button placements now i guess if you're a beginner maybe you need that but i don't normally uh, follow the button placement anyway i always go for a button at the top and then a button by my um where um what's it called it's called the apex you have sort of should have you find out whether your apex of your bust line is and you definitely put a button there especially for a blouse actually to be fair because it's a loose blouse it doesn't really matter but for a more fitted blouse you should always have a button here so that when you're wearing it this um you know sometimes buttons uh, tend to open up but if you have a button here that prevents the opening up of um of your blouse so like i said if you can't be bothered to do the whole thing bear in mind that the last two columns um sort of yeah the, the last quarter of that big um a zero page is button um button placement pattern pieces which i don't think you need if you're not a beginner so you don't have to stick those bits together so that's that i really really love that um and i can see now why this pattern is so popular um, and what else have I been up to? Yep, recently, which is just actually the other day, I managed to finish my um, blog post project for Little Miss So-and-So, who I'm one of their brand ambassadors, and I got their their May um, subscription box, um, all set to so, so special, which normally retails are at about £45, but I get it free of charge in exchange for an honest review of vlog and blog post. Um, and I have made that up now. So the pattern I chose was the Belgravia Knit Dress by Lisa Linko. And um, as I say, with the all set to sew, so special kits, uh, if you you can buy them, you can buy them as a one-off purchase, like for a gift, for example. And you can choose all different sorts of patterns, and they have it's a full kit, you know, sort of the pattern, the fabric, the notions, all that sort of thing, and a gift as well. No, not a gift. So when you can buy the kit separately as a one-off purchase and there's no gift in that and they vary in price depending on the size range and depending on the pattern. With the all set to sew, so special kits, um, they are £45 and you get everything you need for the pattern uh, plus a free gift as well. Um, and then there's there's two tiers of that. There's the so special and this is so luxurious. The only difference is that with the so luxurious you get uh, the designer choices of fabrics like Art Arts Gallery, Atelier Brunette, Lady McElroy, Dashwood Studios, um, which is great. And that's £65. And the difference between a normal sort of sewing kit um, and the Little Miss So-and-So all set to sew kits is that every um, when you do subscribe, every month you get an email with a choice of either knit, fab a knit pattern or a woven pattern. Um, and then once you choose the pattern that you want to, to make up for that month, you then get a choice of different fabric bases and different prints to choose from, which is amazing. Um, and then they send you all of that in a kit, which is great. Um, so I think it's nice having a subscription box where um, even though you can't tailor everything, for example, you don't know what uh, patterns are going to be um, on offer, uh, but you can choose your fabric base and your fabric print, which is really, really good. Um, alternatively, you can also ask for them to uh, choose a fabric for you. So there's an element of surprise with your subscription box. But I think it's a great kit uh, on the market that has a different USP, a unique selling point. Um, so yeah, so I've made that dress. I'll show you her over here. 
I decided to go for their organic um, cotton jersey in their jeans colorway. So it's basically like a teal colorway. And I went for the long sleeve version. Um, and I just pan her down. Oh, sorry, the tie belt's a bit. Um, all the way down to the bottom there. So in terms of the pattern, I've never used a, a Liesl & Coke pattern before, uh, but it wasn't too bad. So they have a tissue paper, um, tissue paper pattern pieces, and then their instruction booklet comes in the form of, not a booklet, it comes in the form of an A3 piece of paper, kind of similar to the Big Four patterns. Uh, black and white, fairly simple to, um, to work out what's going on. And um, what's the difficulty rating? It's one scissors, so it's fairly uh, uh, beginner friendly. And um, what did I do differently to the pattern? Oh, yeah, so here's the pattern here. I omitted the slit at the front. I lengthened it and I graded the skirt out a bit more so it wasn't too clingy. Um, and I decided to go for the long sleeve version because... For those of you that follow me will know I'm quite a cold person. I like to be warm. And then if I just get a bit too hot, I just roll, I just pull the sleeves up. Um, although I do now, because I like this dress so much, I do have plans to make a short sleeve version, hopefully. Um, what else did I do? Yes, yeah, so I decided to go for the um, size 12, which according to my body measurements was the size to go for. Having made it up though, it was really, really big. Like at the waist, I had to put... Um, take it in by an inch and from the hip all the way down I had to take it in by an inch and a half um, and in hindsight looking at the pattern Pete looking at the um, size chart and finished garment um, chart at the back it's odd uh, for a knit dress that there is a lot of ease so the size 12 bust would be a 39 but uh, 39 bust and a waist of 31 and a half inches and the finished measurements would be a 41 and three quarter bust and a 33 and a half inch waist so in terms of the bust that would be 39 40 41 two inches and three two and three quarter inch ease in the bust which is quite a lot um, and you normally get sort of that in a, in a woven pattern, but for knit, normally, from my experience anyway, you have what's called negative ease. So, for example, Tilly in the buttons, if your measurement is like a 38 bust, um, the finished garment for that size would be like a 37. So it's negative ease because for knit fabrics, it allows the fabric to stretch and sort of mould according to your body measurements um, and so this is the first time actually I've seen a knit pattern where the ease is positive as opposed to negative but I will bear that in mind for next time to size down because there is there is a lot of ease in the pattern so that's just one thing to note if you do plan to make this dress secondly um, what was I gonna say Oh, no, it reminds me of the named clothing Kilo Wrap Dress, which is quite popular on Instagram. Um, I'll show you. I don't know if I can show you here. So basically what it is, it's a jersey dress, a V-neck here. It's got center seams all the way down to allow for this sort of intriguing sort of piece that comes out from the bodice. And then it's just long straps. And what you do is you, let me just put that, you fold this over as so. So you get that lovely ruching effect and you get sort of that V that is quite flattering at the waistline. And then you turn it around, you wrap it around your back and you fold it over. And I know the Kilo Wrap Dress is very, very similar except that it has more fabric on the side. Uh, but it has sort of the same effect and I think it's sleeveless although now the pattern I believe they have added um, what they call like an add-on to put sleeves on um, what else was I going to say about this dress yes so I haven't really made anything with um, cotton jersey before maybe have I no, for my daughters I have. I've made them sort of t-shirt dresses, that sort of thing. But nothing for myself because I always thought that cotton jersey would be quite clingy and that you would see all your lumps and bumps. And I just it just wasn't anything, especially in a plain fabric, actually. I think with a print, you could get away with it because the print will mask sort of things that you want to mask. Um, but funnily enough, it, it was okay. I will pop up some pictures of me wearing it. And I really, really like the look. I think it looks quite formal um, with some heels. Um, and in the winter as well with, um, you know, sort of tights and boots, I think it looked really, really nice. Um, and I really, really like it. Um, 
so yeah that's that dress um recently i have just recently received the um sorry i'm saying um a lot the june box for the little miss so and so all set to sew kits i have upgraded to the so luxurious kit and i have got a separate vlog on in my channel for the unboxing of that and from now on i will do the unboxing and i will be revealing the garment for the last month's box at the end of the unboxing which i have just done and it's this same garment here um, and for those of you that do follow me, that do watch me often, there is going to be, well, there is a lot of repetition in my vlogs in the sense that obviously the Friday Sews vlogs are a roundup of the past two weeks or the past week. Then you have my roundup makes at the end of the month, which is a roundup of the whole month. And also with regards to the subscription boxes, I do tend to do separate vlogs for them so that, you know, if somebody is after a particular opening, unboxing or a particular garment reveal, they can go directly to that rather than going through Friday Sews vlogs where you have to sort of find what you're looking for. And um, what else have I been up to? Um that's it oh i have already also made um oh no i just wanted to say about this blouse here the anthea allen blouse the anthea blouse by anna allen this was supposed to be a collaboration with beth from let's sew olive um and we sort of set a date for the 24th of june i believe as a reveal date and it was all set we had agreed to it and everything and as soon as i'd made it i just made a re I, I loved it so much I made a reel and I posted it on Instagram that night and I just totally forgot about Beth um, and it was only the next day I was still buzzing over how beautiful this blouse was that I messaged Beth on excuse me on Instagram and I said oh how are you blah 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 and I was going to say oh have you you know seen my Anthea blouse have you made it and then I realized as I was about to type it I was like oh no that was supposed to be a collaboration with Beth and I, I've now sort of you know posted it so I can't do it anymore so when I anyway I apologized to her and she said yeah she she was a bit confused that I had posted it on Instagram so Beth if you're watching I'm really really sorry um so it's no longer a collaboration for her obviously because I've obviously shown it off on Instagram already but I do hope to do a collaboration with Beth in the future. Um, yes, I do have another collaboration for June uh, with Claire from Stitch Hem Sew. So two items, it's sort of a top and a bottom. I have already made the top, but I can't show you that yet because um, the reveal date is next week. Um, and I'm hoping to do a Friday Sews vlog on that as well. Uh, we are away, my family and I are away the last week of June, beginning of July. We're going camping in Wales. So that'll be fun. Eight children camping, yay. <laughs> But this is slightly different camping in the sense that they have um, specified shower blocks, which is amazing. They've got electricity ports per pitch. There's a swimming pool. There's restaurants. There's a cafe, that sort of thing. And I refer it to like a cheap version of Centre Parks because um, that's what it looks like. We've never been before, but we know friends that go every year. So we are joining them this time. We didn't book Centre Parks this year. We went... We've been going for a couple of years, but then when COVID hit, we stopped going and we haven't really returned. So I just think uh, this is sort of um, another another form of centre parks for us. Uh, so that's uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, and apart from that, just getting through my makes for the rest of the month. Um, I was going to say thank you so much for all my subscribers as well. I think I'm on like 1,190 subscribers, which is super, super amazing. Um, I do like uh, love and... Um, reading all your comments so please do comment below um if you do like the content of my vlog um, and you haven't already subscribed please do so um and if you'd like to tell your friends if they're you know if you have any sewing buddies that want to watch somebody new uh, then please let them know as well and in the meantime thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time thank you bye bye